time to call our meeting to order. Please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The next item is the approval of the minutes from the February 23rd regular meeting. We haven't had a chance to look at the minutes. Anybody have any additions or changes? Hearing none, there's a motion to approve the minutes as presented. So Second. Mr. Beerspot? Yeah. Mr. Gabbard? Yeah. Mr. Wade? Yeah. Under fiscal business, fiscal officer's report? Yes, I've got uh, a few things today. First off, um, you know, staff has access to our, our UAN software 24-7, but the board did receive a revenue and appropriation status report over the weekend. They have signed off on the fund status report, and as usual, I'll, I'll read into the record that we have $11,761,972.22 in our investment checking accounts. I, I do want the board to know that includes a million-dollar advancement on our uh, first half settlement. Okay. Uh, we talked about that previously. Um, a couple other things I want to talk about. Um, we've been having a problem with the receipts with um, and reimbursements. Nothing's inappropriate in the least. The problem is the auditor has to see an itemized receipt when, when they look at our audit. So I thought to maybe bring this to people's attention, doesn't matter who it is because the guy I picked, it could have been anybody. Um, I just want I just want you to see uh, what, what what's being turned in for reimbursement. Um, I'm sure there's absolutely nothing wrong with it, but when you go to some place like Hard Rock Cafe and turn in a $19 bill, I'm sure it was a cheeseburger and fries, but uh, the public doesn't know that, and certainly our auditor doesn't know that, and we need um, to emphasize the itemized bills. Yeah, you know we have to. Every, every business goes through this, and, and uh, you have to. You have to put that on there. My, company, my, my company won't accept that. They would not. No, not at all. I, I will not. It, yeah, it has to be an itemized. So. And but now, neither will the IRS. No, no I'm very <laughs> familiar with that. The uh, and really, I can't. Can't you just write on here? I was at uh, at a class in Cleveland, and I had a cheeseburger and fries. No. It, the, has, to the, the, it has to be an they itemized. Be yeah, they the always get, they always get it too. They, they, well, then, yeah, they do give me two. And again, it, I'm not trying to make a huge deal out of it, but I think if I bring it's it to your hard. guys' attention, it's that it's a, it's, a, it's a reminder, Jack, you know. Why don't you send out an email to everybody and uh, to the department heads for them to forward on, make it official that, you know, you're not going to get a reimbursed unless you give an itemized statement. And all they have to do is add the tip manually to that. I just, Linda and I spoke about it. This is something I deal with every month, and it's absolutely in line with the, what the IRS asked for. Yeah, it shouldn't be a big deal. So it's not that hard, really. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, one last thing, um, and so that I didn't catch him flat-footed, I, I emailed um, Mr. Pacheco that I was going to be talking to um, about this. But um, I know there's been, because of the lawsuit and stuff, there's some, uh, it's disconcerting sometimes when I send out the minutes on the email because I sent it to all three of you and Mr. Cameron and Mr. Palmer and I know that um, I, I, what, what, Brian, why don't you explain why that's okay to do because I just I want to alleviate any concerns people have made in, in replying back to that email. So what I understand is uh, the fiscal officer is emailing the minutes to the trustees and to Mr. Cameron and Mr. Palmer before to get their impression of what's going on which by the way consistent with practice of other jurisdictions that I'm aware of where they give the draft minutes and the, and the other uh, Administrators and the uh, political subdivision officers take a look at that. And, and then but what that. we do, if we have a comment and say that it's uh, okay, I didn't hear it the same way, then we get back with them and, and then she, she'll redo it and run it through again. And then, okay. So yeah, and then you, besides you, you're not approving anything until <coughs> you come here yeah. anyway. So those are those but at that point they become we approved. do a change before. We yeah, and okay. that's not it's not a deliberation okay. because only one person is doing that. Deliberation would require two of you. Right, so we can't reply to all. Yeah, I, I would suggest you not reply to all. Correct. We reply to Linda yeah. individually if correct. we have changes that we would like to correct. see or, or corrections. 
Yeah, because and then she can revisit it with the group once she's made those. Correct, because that that's that, that requires a prearranged meeting and it, re it requires right. two. It requires majority. Right. So if you have neither in that instance. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you for. I just wanted to make sure everybody knew that that was okay. And that's it. Okay. Uh, current bills. We have had a chance to look at the current bills. Anybody have any additions or questions about the current bill? <coughs> Hearing none, is there a motion to pay the bill? So moved. Second. Mr. Gabbard? Yay. Mr. Mayor's Yay. Mr. White? Yay. Anything under unfinished business? No, sir. Okay. New business administration, no agenda items tonight. Police district, we have resolution 4676, a resolution accepting a donation from the Rotary Club of Springfield for Cookery Township Police Department. Obviously, they presented that last week, and I failed to ask for a motion to accept that. Uh, by practice, we usually do that by resolution. Uh, I wasn't sure exactly what day we were going to come in, so I would have let them uh, come in and present it. And I'm just doing the follow-up, which is our normal practice to create a resolution, asking the, uh, you guys to authorize the police department to accept that. So we're just cleaning that up a little bit. Just to point out, if our document has it as 4677, which would be a duplication of the, of the roads department. Uh, that needs to be corrected to 4676. You're right. Thank you. Okay. Is there a motion to approve 4676? So moved. Second. Ms. Mears Paul? Yay. Mr. Gabbard? Yay. Mr. Wade? Yay. Thank you. And the uh, monthly report? Uh, crashes are up on day shift for three loans, so it's kind of like two, two to one since last year. We're averaging about one crash a day every day of this year so far, so a little disconcerting. Probably just something to do with uh, some of the weather. Uh, calls up are up uh, from February of last year, about 1,600 uh, for this month. Um, other than that, uh, we've talked about the Valero station in the past, and I know the board has uh, uh, the right to at times uh, question their liquor license, and we've had a couple of events in the past, and then this will make the board aware we're back watching them again. We had the original issue, which is the sale of spice, which has been outlawed by the state, and drug paraphernalia that they were selling out of the uh, front there, and then we went through the uh, uh, pornographic material they were selling uh, for a while that we had to go in and uh, uh, do uh, some charges with them on that. And now they're done underage sales, and uh, we'd asked uh, liquor control to assist us last week, and uh, make a purchase in there and they have inside it and they'll be uh, uh, looking at uh, having to answer that citation. But we're back looking at the, their behavior again as to whether or not sometime in the future we may ask you to, uh, you know, I've talked to the owner up there several times about behaving himself and, and uh, you know, the track record, record just keeps on uh, going. So uh, at some point in time I may uh, bring that back to the board when it comes to liquor permit renewal time. This is an issue that uh, we may have to address in some way, so just to make you aware of that. Okay. And uh, last thing, the police department probably, uh, just a kudos to Sergeant Cornett, he's been investigating uh, one of our sexual cases that was resolved here recently. Uh, the fellow that was sentenced to three years in prison uh, has to do one year uh, mandatory before he can ask for release. Uh, it was involving a young girl in the township and uh, several others, uh, along with, it was a search warrant search in Deerfield Township where he lives. Uh, and had a bunch of drugs down there at the time of the search warrant and so forth. So that case has resolved itself uh, prior to trial with a plea of guilty, and uh, he's been sentenced to three years in prison. So uh, that's where he needs to be for a while. So, good. That's all I have, sir. Okay. Anybody have any questions for Chief? <coughs> okay. Fire District, we have orientation completion recommendation. Well, since the Chief would just call it out on an EMS run, so. I'll, I'll, I'll try to handle this. Okay. Uh, all three of these, uh, Mr. Dinglinger, uh, Mr. Henry, and O'Neill, has passed their one-year orientational period, and we ask that uh, they be promoted to permanent full-time status and appropriate pay rates. Okay, but we need to do this in individual <laughs> three different motions. <laughs> I, I didn't forget. No. Nope. Okay. Is, is there a motion <laughs> to? Except firefighter and paramedic Ken Dinlinger as a full, as a permanent full-time firefighter and paramedic with the appropriate pay increase. So moved. Second. Mr. Gabbard? Yay. Mr. Mearspaw? Yay. Mr. Wade? Yay. And is there a sane motion for Eric Henry? 
So moved. Second. Mr. Mearspaw? Yay. Yeah. Mr. Gabbard? Yay. Yeah. Mr. Wade? Yay. Yeah. And also for Sean. So moved. Second. Mr. Gabbard? Yay. Yeah. Mr. Mearspaw? Yay. Yeah. Mr. Wade? Yay. Yeah. Okay, and we have an ATO training completion recommendation for Matt Spears. Uh, it is his aerial power operations requirement and uh, with the appropriate pay increase. Is there a motion to move him, give him the step increase? So moved. Second. Mr. Mearspaw? Yeah. Mr. Gabbard? Yeah. Mr. Wade? Yeah. Monthly report? Anybody have any questions about the monthly report? We've been able to see that, so I don't have any questions. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else for the five district? Line? No. Okay. Why Zoning not? department monthly report. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, this is the most exciting thing is the back page. We see three <coughs> new lots for uh, new subdivision coming through. I just to bring you guys' attention. You know, off of Parliament Road, rain that currently goes to the north. This now will have a section that goes to the south. It has a width of 60 foot road right away because that's what the standard was back through 2010 ish. Mm -hmm. So, this is the first subdivision that's gone through that chose not to ask for a full variance from or kind of sub ranks. Mm -hmm. So, we have 60 foot of road right away going north to south, but then we have the new standard of 70 going east west. So, at some point in time, we will have the new standard be the entire new standard, but Kind of have the mismatch occurring. It's one of those crazy. Uh, have, have, have you heard from the developer about it? Yeah, I mean they're comfortable. They basically um, designed it as such. The preliminary, because we had the discussion, the concept plan of. All right, we've got basically a, a uh, paper street existing from rain. You know, it's not the current. How do you want to do this? Do you want to put curb and gutter in there? Do you want to do it? No, we still want to do it as swale. It's been our standard for swale for decades. <coughs> It's just one of those things that it's going to look just a little bit different on paper. But out in the field, you probably shouldn't know this much. But I can answer questions about the monthly. Anybody have any questions about the monthly report? Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, sir. We have the Road Department Resolution 4677, resolution authorizing Township Administrator to submit a safety sign grant application, application to the Ohio Department of Transportation. And accept those funds awarded. So they've offered these grants several times, but there were different criteria. And previously, it was criteria that we really couldn't meet. This is a, a different. It's itemized. It's done differently. The time frames are different. You can ask for an extenuation, and it's off of the crash data. It's mainly just to uh, take an area that uh, it's more or less for warning signs, regulatory signs. That's about it. So if you have a standard 30 by 30 area with a placard speed underneath. We'll upgrade that to a 36 with reflector strips and put it on both sides of the road just to bring some of our higher crash areas up, make them a little, a little bit safer. Great idea. <coughs> okay, any, any questions about 4677? Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Mr. Gabbard? Yay. Yeah. Mr. Mearspaw? Yay. Yeah. Mr. Wade? Yay. Yeah. And uh, monthly report? Anybody have any questions? Um, basically, just talk a little bit about the uh, overtime and the salt we used this year with the predicament we found ourselves in before the season started. Um, I think we, we were lucky with the uh, events we had. We only had 12. And uh, this year we only had like 379 hours of overtime as opposed to last year at 555. And that's a combined department, not including the hours that I'm in. So we used about 1,000 to 1,200 ton of salt. Last year we used about 1,400 to 1,600 ton. And uh, the schools this year used 46.75 tons. We've got about 800 or so left in the barn. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we, we actually came through it uh, pretty well. And uh, you know, the only difference was last year we paid 49.85 a ton. This year it was 96.58 a ton. So, but, but I think we made it through looking you know, forward with the, the weather. I think, I think we're pretty good to go. So. I hope you're right. <laughs> so when, when, when will you start the process to ask for bids for salt again? Wait till county engineer. That's them. when the, the swap bid G4 comes out and all that. And okay. They're actually on. They get on it pretty quick. So I'd yeah. say in a few months we'll see that already. Good. So. 
I'll be curious to see how that how it affects the people who previously got Morton and didn't get it at all this year. Mm -hmm. I know Springboro went ahead after they got the uh, amount from us. They bought Morton, contacted them, and sold them a bunch more yeah. just so they could stay on the list for next year. So I'm hoping we don't get bumped out because we didn't purchase from them and it wasn't made available to us to purchase from them. So. But isn't that the lawsuit that DeWine's got going between Cargill and Morton that they were just swapping customers to, to increase I, the price, bump up the price? I'm not sure. Yeah. 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 So that's why Morton wasn't making itself available to cargo customers and vice versa. So that's what the antitrust lawsuit's about. I was at a meeting recently with the city, and they said they have 1,800 tons in uh, the last two store. Wow. So they have a pretty good stockpile after we've done that. I, I didn't know, and I was wondering how did that happen. But they couldn't get any, so that, that clears that up. I didn't ask a question. I think they got from a vendor outside of Morton and us as well. So. Okay, very good. Anybody have any questions for Scott? Okay. Any staff updates? Any updates from the. Cabinet? I've got a few items for you. Um, reminders the engineer's dinner is this Thursday. He's going to have a talking point on his agenda for us to bring up the subject of aggregation. I didn't know what the expectation was from the group as to who was going to, to talk or address the issue. I am not going to be there. And I, talk, I called Neil last week and told him I couldn't make it. I changed plans. But, uh, so it obviously won't be me. So, but, uh, I did want to let him know since we had responded and said, well, I, we don't be there. So, I, you know, anybody, Steve, you do it, Jack can do it, it doesn't really, I don't know that it matters. I don't have any preference. Uh, I, I mean, I, I'm happy to start it off and give some of the nuts and bolts, and if you two want to, we can kind of ham and egg it. you three want to chime in on your thoughts on it as a trustee, I mean, if that's what you want, but I didn't know what the expectation was. I just wanted to make sure. I think possibly if um, if you could give them you know the basics and then uh, give uh, an opportunity to either Jason or myself that to offer our attendance to one of their meetings to address it and explain uh, in a manner that it's not some salesperson trying to sell them on something you know, that's a, a, a work of uh, collaboration between cooperating uh, entities, I guess. I guess. The other thing I would put to that would be that we would give them the opportunity to give us feedback at that point if they've already looked at it. Yeah. Just to, to be able to tell them, and you, you and I can do that. That's, you, you, well, and Hamilton Township already has it. Hamilton right? has it. So they might be able to tell I don't their know. Successes. Does Deerfield come to that? No. Not usually. That's so fun. Okay. So I, I would be interested to see what other entities, if they've, if they've dealt with it. I mean, Steve, yeah. I know you've talked to some others I have as well. I, I haven't heard a lot of it, but that doesn't mean others haven't talked about it. And, and we can yeah. open up that dialogue. It would be interesting to see what the other guys think. Okay. Okay. Well, that's, that's how long a time are they going to have a And is it before or after, Neil? You know, I don't know the answer to that, but and I don't know how long, however long it takes. I can't imagine, but if the group wants to get into some Q&A on it, it, it could go longer. But yeah. it, Typically, uh, you know, you might get 10 minutes. That would be more five. than about five. Yeah. Probably yeah. Be yeah. yeah. Because uh, it, that's a niche crowd, and after Neil kind of, you know, Neil drags things out a little bit, and, and uh, everybody gets a little nervous to get out of there. Nice All right. Well, I'll I'll plan on it's, I'll, kicking I'll it off and that before, so it's okay. <laughs> having you two jump in from your trustee and to, to offer your thoughts. A uh, couple other things. We'll have the liability insurance renewal on for the next meeting, so we're going to get the quote back from Oparma. Just FYI, that's that's coming up. Uh, March twenty third is is the retreat, which you've gotten some information on. That, there will be an agenda she's sent back and forth. So you'll clearly know 9 to 4 is, is the time prescribed. We'll have food, lunch come in, 
just you know sandwiches and stuff for everybody, so you don't have to worry about where the food's coming from. Uh, the staff will be there. There will be more information you get to, so that you understand your role in that Monday day. Any questions on that one before I? I've got one more. Is staff expected to be there the whole day? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They they're all planning on that, and that's part of the way it'll it'll work together. Okay. Uh, final issue we Scott has been dealing with, uh, and I, I sent you an email just to to brief you on that we had this situation where there's a property, uh, residential property, where the sump pump is is charging out into the yard, quite a bit of water's coming out, it's going over the curb, and with this cold weather it's just creating an icy condition and has been, and they've been trying to manage it for the winter time. Uh, talk to Brian about that on what we can do, what our remedies are to deal with this situation, because it's, it's a hazard in, in the street, in the right way. Uh, the one thing we found, one thing Brian found, the county has a resolution prohibiting discharging from a sump pump into the gutter, right away, sidewalk. So they have that prohibition to where uh, the prosecutor's office would proceed with dealing with the matter. And, and he would, he's talked to David Formshell about it, and it's something they would pursue. I think what we wanted to do here was just make sure you as trustees understand this issue's there. We, we think it needs to be dealt with. It may end up being something you as trustees have to take action on in the future, and we didn't want to go down the road if, if you were not comfortable with it. The first thing we do is, is Scott would call them and say, you know, we have this issue. Then they potentially get a letter and hopefully we, we get some cooperation. But if, if we don't, it's, it's, we'd go the path of uh, taking some action. And if I, well, I'm sorry, Peter, sorry. Uh, I, I did go look at that, by the way, and I took some pictures. Um, it's a mess, no question about it. It's good, and it will, it'll damage our road in time also question about it. It needs knocked off of there. When I was there, it just happened to be, uh, guy was came home next door and he, he came out to get his mail. Mm -hmm. and now, whether it was just a great plan, but he did fall trying to get to his mailbox. And he, he was skating and he went down on his knee and it was, it's horrible. It is a horrible mess. We have had issues over the years, obviously, you know, you're going to have these once in a while. But this is as bad as I've ever seen. I'll tell you that. Yeah, the I mean, hazards. There, there's a strip coming out of the yard that has no snow, ice, or anything on it because there's that much water running down, and it literally is probably three foot wide. Fair, fair assumption. Yeah. What subdivision is this? It's so right off of Patton, the okay. first street to the left when you go really? down Patton. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a problem, <coughs> and it like not only is it dangerous for people entering, going in and out of the driveways, but and walking or uh, it's mess. It's not. It's something that definitely needs to be dealt with. I I would completely agree. Obviously, we need to take the steps of whatever we can do of, of giving them an opportunity. But if they don't want to comply, I mean that's. <laughs> I expect now. Have the neighbors been complaining? I spoke to the neighbors, two different neighbors, on several occasions, and they're very happy that we're just looking into it. They're very okay. excited that. Hopefully by next winter we can have something done. I'm sure the people's houses in are very fine people and they don't realize what a problem it is. And that for some some reason, when their plumbing discharge system, because it's coming from behind the house. Well, to my understanding, they actually piped it out within a few feet from the curb years ago. And someone talked to them, uh, might even be Jimmy or somebody said something to them, and they actually moved it back. It comes out that front right corner of the house. The PVC pipe about that big on that front right corner, and it just never stops. And it's coming out that pace? Yeah. yeah. It never stops. No, they have a they, spring they, under their house? Well, they must. They must, and they, they sit on that hill, and there's nowhere else for that water to go. Yeah. So they probably aren't aware that's that there's past any. the pond and everything, then? It's on High Mount, the very top yeah. there in the center. So oh, everything, yeah. the topography, is higher the elevation than they are. Right. And they did move it back right at their house to give it a chance to soak into the ground, but it, it just doesn't, the ground's too saturated, and 
You can think about the, how much flow it must be for in this weather not to freeze. The, and the neighbor said that uh, they have not spoke to those people, that they come in, their garage door goes up, they go in, their garage door shuts, and they've been there a year or two, and they've never spoken to them. It's different owners than that were there in the past when they moved it back initially. I haven't had a chance to go up there. Have you been talking? Has anybody talked to the owners? Not yet. We or haven't we spoke were. to them yet because we wanted to make sure we knew the what our yeah. you know steps were going to be. So but that would be the first thing is hopefully they go. Essentially yeah. treating it like a nuisance until, but it goes to the, it goes a, a different direction. Yeah, like that. And, and there's the county confirmed there's a drain behind that curve that they can tie into. So there's not a super expensive remedy. So there's a solution that they can apply. Hopefully that's that's what happens and. There's a drainage. There's a drainage uh, basin. Basins. Yeah, it's piped, and they can, they can take it away. Yeah. So that's. I think we just wanted to brief you and make sure there's no there's no concerns. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. That's all I have. I did have just one. Uh, the first Monday in March every year. We have the Warren County Combined Health District uh, annual meeting, and uh, I have been the chair of that for a long time. And do, do you guys, did you guys get these? Maybe it's just me and I got you that. got this? Yeah. And you got, did you get this in the mail? It's just the annual report and the budget. I don't think in, in an envelope like that? Yep. I don't, I don't believe it's exactly like that. Okay. Well, there. There you have it. I just want to make sure you got a chance to look at that. You're this year's president. <laughs> no, no, we, did not, we did not nominate you. Did you have something to do with this, Palmer? <laughs> but, anyway, I did it, Ken. And uh, it is interesting in the number of issues that the health department actually, the inspections and the, what they do with the amount of money that they have. And also, our, our cost to us is Clifford Township has not changed in probably 12, 12 years, maybe 13. So it's one of these days they're going to have to come back and say, okay, we need another dollar or, so, or something like that. They're bound to. We pay, what, sixteen, seventeen thousand a year now? That's all. And we do have, well, they inspect the restaurants and they inspect the schools and lots of things. Anyway, that's all I had. I just wanted to point out that I'm not sure that you had that. It is kind of interesting. Yeah, all right. Did not get it. Anybody have anything else? Okay. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Mr. Gispaw? Yeah. Mr. Gavin? Yeah. Mr. Wade? Yeah.